What right. up? This is Rama Screen and in the anticipation of Locked In, which arrives on demand and on digital May 7, I'm here talking with the director of this new film, Carlos Gutierrez. How are you, Carlos? I'm doing great, Rama. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for taking the time and congrats on the film. So you wrote this original script as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your feature length directorial debut, right? That is correct. Yeah, I'm a director of many, many commercials, uh, about six different short films and documentaries as well. So how long did you work on the script of Locked In and what made you decide that you wanted to take this on as your directorial debut, as opposed to perhaps handing in the script off to another director? You know, I will tell you, I wrote the script originally for someone who was a hero of mine that unfortunately passed away, which is Tony Scott. Oh, famous director, Tony Scott. Yeah. And I, it was a very different film when I wrote it. And once, you know, I kind of realized, okay, I can do this. I'm at the point where in my career I could do this. It took me about three years to really take it from that level to a, a more independent film level. And in doing so, I wrote it in a way that I knew I could maximize not only the, the chances I could work with the actors, but not having to jump around a lot in locations. So it started also from that, that I really wanted a location that could hold the audience's attention for the 90 minutes. Now you got me curious. Uh, you said, uh, I mean, how different was the original script? It was very different. I mean, it was much bigger. I mean, it oh. started with a uh, kind of Palm Desert casino heist mm. and, uh, you know, big, big Tony Scott style, cars blowing up, uh, lots of guns. And... Um, you know, once I realized I was directing it, I wanted to make it something that was easier for me to kind of sink my teeth into on the first go. Talk to me about the cast. Uh, Jeff, uh, Mina, Manny. I actually recently interviewed Manny for another project not too long ago. Uh, how did you round up this wonderful group of actors? Well, I'll tell you something. It was a combination of everybody. You know, first of all, just making sure the script was in a way that would attract, you know, the right kind of talent that we wanted the casting director, the producers, everybody really chipped in and, you know, we just made a really concise list, really went after who we thought was the best. And I think we got the best for all those roles. I'm curious as well, which storage facility location that you guys shot this film at? And what were some of the things that you guys incorporated to make the place look more technologically advanced than it actually seemed? Right, so we shot the film in Pennsylvania Mm. Uh, about a 30 minute drive outside of Philadelphia. And the storage place was nothing more than generous to just allow us whatever we wanted. It was the perfect partner. And that's what we were looking for. That was actually what took the longest was really to find the right storage facility in Pennsylvania. Uh, at one point we were thinking of shooting in Pittsburgh. We ended up moving back to Philadelphia. And so there was a lot of that, just finding the right location that would have the visual quality we expected but then also the comfort and, you know, allowing us to shoot daytime, nighttime, whatever it might be. To follow up on that, what were the challenges of filming in such logistics? I mean, was it difficult to navigate the cameras around those close quarters and tight corners inside the storage facility? And talk to me about staging the action set pieces within such location. So I think the challenges were really about how to manage a self-storage with an entire crew, right? Mm. Where do you put everybody when you're not shooting? Where do you put people while you're shooting one floor? Are they on a different floor? Are they making noise on that floor that can be heard on a different floor? Um, you know, we had a second unit. So as you know, in second unit, they're kind of doing their own thing based on the direction that I'm giving them. So there was a lot of that coordination that was, you know, difficult. Just imagine trying to shoot in an office building you've been given the keys to and said, you can run wild to a degree. Um, one funny little anecdote is that when we were there, uh, initially scouting the location, we found someone who was actually using it to live in one wow. of the lockers. So, and it wasn't a problem. Uh, he used it occasionally. It was like his uh, crash pad. So yeah. it's just, you know, uh, yeah. ranger than fiction is the saying, you know, there was certain things, even in doing the research for the film and scouting that if I had tried to put them in the film, it would seem too crazy, you know? It almost feel like a Terry Gilliam movie. Like, no, that doesn't really happen in life. Um, and then in terms of the action sequences, we had a great stunt coordinator on board, Chad Noor. And Chad mm -hmm. was so generous with his time. He had just come off of Joker and was helping us on, on this. And he's, yeah, he's actually 
in Joker, the guy who gets his head bashed in by Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, awesome. To the end. Yeah. And uh, he's a big dude, you know, former police officer, big man, very smart, knew how to maintain the safety on the set, but mm -hmm. also get maximum impact for the camera so that, you know, everything just looked, you know, as real as possible. And that was really important to me as well. As I'm winding down, so now that you've gotten your feature directorial debut arriving now, what's next on your horizon? Are you developing your second directorial film as we speak? Well, right now I'm actually developing two. I'm de developing Ooh, two wow. and number three. So yeah. um, one, I can talk. I, I can talk about both films. So one film I didn't write the script. It's called Stay Safe. I've mm -hmm. been brought on to direct it, and we're hopefully shooting that uh, sometime in the summer. And uh, we're really excited with the cast that we got. A lot of possibilities. It's a horror thriller, and uh, we're just thinking it's going to be a really fun film to to film and hopefully people like it uh the set the third one would actually be one that i wrote called open house and that's a thriller set in the real estate world so that would be the next one after it. final final question uh what's your advice for aspiring filmmakers that want to break into the business uh should they should they go through the indie route do they should they write scripts for uh, other big filmmakers like you did you know it really it really depends know yourself know you know, what you're good at. Uh, if you're going to be a writer director, you're going to take more of an indie route first. Mm -hmm. That's sure. There's the other way, which is people who just want to direct and want to find the right script. And I will just tell you the one rule is whether you're writing the script or you're finding a script, make sure it's on the page because honestly, you can't make it up with all the VFX in the world and all the best acting in the world. If the story and the characters aren't alive on the page it's not there's really not that much you can do from it you know so that would be my advice look for the best script partner with people who are writers if you're not a writer partner with a writer if you're a writer director watch every writer director debut and see what they did and didn't do well and kind of take that in awesome for my fans at home everybody go check out locked in arriving on demand and on digital may 7 carlos thank you for talking to me thank and you, congratulations man.